One half times two is one. So you get one pi. You'll notice um, a lot of times when we're dealing with radians and degrees, when I graph some, when you graph, when a measurement is given in radians, it, it won't. Sometimes they'll drop the radian. In degrees, there will always be a little circle up here if you're in degrees. So one way to tell the difference between radians and degrees, if you're just given an angle measure, if it says this angle is 2, okay, um, unless there's a degree symbol, you assume radians. So this is pi, but because there's no degree symbol, I know it's pi radians. So what about... We actually did this one before. This, this angle that cuts exactly halfway between the x and y axis. What would this angle be in radians? Power of 4. Why? Because it's 1 fourth of pi. Right? I know. I know. I know. It seems, it seems either obvious or mystical. Okay, it's one or the other for everybody. Okay, um, but it it's important because <laughs> everything we do in this class is going to be in radians. You're not going to see this very much. All right? So this is pi over four because if you think about where pi lands, right? This is pi. I have cut that pi into four equal sectors. One, two, three. And this particular angle right here goes, you know, rotates through one of those sectors. So it's one pi over four. While I have this drawing up there, what if I wanted to rotate from this positive x-axis to this ray right here? What do you think that radian measure would be? Three pi over four. Do you guys see how I'm getting that? If one of these is pi over 4, then 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Where do you think then 1 radian would be? Not 1 pi radian, radians, 1 single radian. Six point something of a approximately one sixth of a full rotation, right? Because this full rotation here is about six point two eight radians. So if I cut that into six equal pieces, I'll get one sixth of six point two eight, which is about one radian. So somewhere like right, one sixth of this full rotation. Okay. So one radian is a lot bigger than one degree, which is so there, uh, let, let me ask you one more question and I'll let you go on. On Monday I'll, I'll go through this very rigorously and, and, uh, and, and figure, figure everything out with you, but I want to give you enough to at least start looking at the first part of the homework, which is graphing angles. Um, what if I ask you to graph uh, something like 2 pi over 3? So random example. Any idea? Have to break pi up into three. Yeah. Treat it just like we did here, right? When we graph three pi over four. We broke pi up into four equal sectors and went three of them. So if you want to graph two pi over three, take your pi, and another classic mistake, pi is half a rotation. Pi is not a full rotation. What's a full rotation? Two pi. Okay. So if you want to graph two pi over three, start with pi, which is right over here, oh, a half rotation and break it into three equal sectors. One, two, three. Right, so this whole slice here, you 
including you know, both sides of the y-axis in each sector. So then for 2 pi over 3, you, this would be 1 pi over 3 right here. If you went up to this guy, this guy would be 2 pi over 3. So the angle that starts here and goes here is the angle of 2 pi over 3. By the by, what if I wanted it negative? Negative 2 pi over 3, is that even possible? Yes. Absolutely! I didn't tell you what negative measurements mean, but maybe you know. Reverse the... Reverses the direction. Okay, so a negative angle measure means instead of going counterclockwise, okay, counterclockwise is always positive for angle measures. Uh, instead of going counterclockwise, if you go clockwise, if you go down first, then you'll get a negative angle. So if I go down and I break this bottom pi, if I break this bottom half rotation into three equal sectors, and I go one, two of those, this guy landing down here would be negative two. So if I want, I won't, because I'm kind of done, but if I wanted to graph, what would be your strategy if I said, student, graph for me seven pi over eight? Divide Take pi, which is half, top half circle, divide it into eight equal sectors, right? Seven pi over eight, the eight is how many sectors you break it into. The denominator tells you how many sectors you break it into, right? You divide it into this many sectors. So 7 pi over 8, you would break pi into 8 equal sectors and then go 7. So that's where, uh, that's where we'll pick up on that. Uh, give, give the homework a shot. Okay, let me know how it goes. If you have any questions, and I will be going over 6.1 on Monday. Yes. Instead of starting out going up, you do everything.